Okay, and we have attendees. Are the attendees hearing us right now? Yes. Daryl, oh, so do you I need to test your slides? I need to stop cursing. All right. <laughs> um, let's. I mean, now that people are listening, let's be on our I best have the behavior. same issue. I have the same issue. I know, Catherine, you, you've got a, a, a truck driver's mouth. You've got to clean it up. It's, <laughs> if you're going to do this a lot, you've got to be good on camera. This is horrible. The, you, your, your words. All right, so we didn't test our slides, so we hope to God that this is going to work out. So let's go. Let's try this. Hang on. I'm going to share right now. And I, I know you're, you're already gonna... live. You're live. OK. Hello, everyone, and welcome. And thank you for tuning in. We have the amazing Daryl Davis now with us. And today's amazing topic, you're all going to absolutely love it, is Zillow. And what do we do now that Zillow has become a competing brokerage? What can we do? How can we explain homeowners why the iBuyer type programs such as Zillow offers are different from our programs, how we differentiate ourselves and how we're going to handle, for example, an objection such as, but the system that says my house is worth more. Okay, uh, I'm going to give it away. Daryl, take over. Okay, they changed the settings. So like now I can't see you, Catherine, but that's, I guess I know you're there. <laughs> uh, Catherine, can you see my slides? Yes, I can see your slides. And you Perfectly. can see me, yes? I can see you too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then let's just get this party started. So gang, um, I have a lot to cover with you. So let me just uh, say a couple of things before we get started, disclaimer. I, we are not anti-Zillow, we're pro-agent. So it may sound like from time to time we're, we're anti, but we're not. Um, I do own this stock, so I, it would be in my best interest to talk positive about them. I'm just being transparent, but I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth of what's happening. I'm not giving legal advice. So if, 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 if you get in trouble, it's not my fault. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the next thing is uh, I'm not politically correct. Any of my students will tell you I talk from my heart and uh, I don't worry about like if I upset people because I probably am going to upset uh, a few people during this. Um, and uh, not you, but other people not on this call, leadership people, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Now, here's the outline gang of this. I'm going to give you some history about Zillow, where we are. And unlike some of the lab code uh, uh, events where Catherine is here and usually it'll be like an interview or something, I have a whole side deck that I'm going to go through. And so we're going to fill up this whole hour. I'm going to tell you what to do about what's happening with Zillow, uh, how to handle Zillow offers and Zestimates, and also some marketing ideas to help you build your business without being dependent on Zillow. I'm going to show my personal cell number that we use to text out motivational stuff. If you all just jot this down really quick, and then I'm gonna get into this content. So 631-212-3051. Julie, maybe we'll put that in the chat or Jake or yeah. somebody. You have to so, text power agent to that to make it No, work. no, not power agent. Text the word lab coat. Text the word lab coat to that, uh, that number, lab coat. 631-212-3051. With that said, let's go on to Zillow's financial. So they haven't, I haven't gotten the access to the 2020 yet. It's actually probably better, but here's the financial report of Zillow. And I just want you all to understand this. If you look at the top line there, there's three places where they generate most of their revenue. There's homes, mortgages, and IMT. See that one, that's like huge, the IMT. The homes is their, their per, the homes that they're buying and stuff. This IMT is actually where premier agent revenue is. And if you take out the expenses associated, here's the punchline. So I don't want to get you lost in the numbers. The punchline is if you take Zillow, all the revenue they make and take out all of the expenses directly related to that item where money's coming in, they have a gross profit. Well, 89% of their gross profit is from premier agent. That's huge. Keep that in mind. Now I'm going to jump to a video from um, that goes back several years. I want to make sure your volume is turned up right now because I want you. It's it's an old video, and we did our best to increase the level. But I'm going to ask you to raise the volume on your speakers right now. And Catherine, you tell me if there's any sound problems. Okay. Okay. 
What you're about to see is Bill Chi. He was the vice NAR's president in 1993. Yeah, I spent several minutes giving you a realistic but very unpleasant assessment of one of the major topics, and that's the MLS service. I believe MLS will be lost to outside organizations and businesses, and that will threaten the stability and operation and membership of this entire organization. Last year, I began to express alarm at the possibility of us losing realtor-owned MLS systems. This alarm was brought about not only by my past experiences in dealing with board-controlled MLS systems, but also by fellow realtors who found new and innovative MLS products being successfully tested in their hometowns by non-realtors. After our meetings in New Orleans, I appointed a presidential advisory group to assess the realtors' competitive position in the marketplace. Their unanimous conclusion warned, and I quote, there is a high probability that the realtor organization will lose control and direction of MLS as it currently exists. I view the current MLS situation as a few chihuahuas fighting over a bone, unaware that a hungry lion is coming over the hill. So President Chi, back in 1993, predicted that there would be a, a hungry lion on the hill. Let's now talk about Zillow. So if we look at Zillow, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Back in 2014, the then CEO of Zillow was Spencer Raskoff, and here's what he did traveling the country. He was saying, we come in peace. <clears throat> Zillow is a media company. We are not a brokerage. We are not an MLS. We do not compete with brokerages. We do not compete with MLSs. We sell houses. We don't sell homes. Zillow is a media company. That's what he went around telling everybody not to worry. Okay. In 2014, um, Zillow hires Errol Samuelson, who was the president of Move. Move was a, is a company uh, owned by NAR. Now, Real Deal said it great when they came out with this article. They said, when the former president of Move, Errol Samuelson, left the rival uh, left for the rival real estate database Zillow in 2014. It turned into a billion, two billion dollar trade theft case. Move accused Samuelson of breach of contract, fiduciary duty, and misappropriation of trade secrets. And this week in court, he claimed a health condition that led to him destroying evidence from his work computer. Now, I am I am not <laughs> I'm not even going to address the fact that this guy Errol did not dispute. That he whether he deleted stuff that he was being sued for, he said it was because of medical reasons. So he basically affirmed that he did. But here's the, here's the point. What's the point in this? Catherine, you still with me? Because I can't see on the screen. Julie, yes, I am here. I just had okay. myself on mute. <laughs> okay, good. Catherine, let's say, let me tell you why this is important. I'm going to talk to you for a second. Mm -hmm. Catherine, let's say you have an assistant mm -hmm. that, uh, that works with you. And right. let's say you and I are, are working together. You're a power agent. We're friends. And then let's say I recruit. I'm your friend, Catherine, but I recruited your assistant away from you. Catherine, would you be upset with me? Yes, I would be. Of course you would, because in business, vendors don't gut other employees from that business. You don't do that. That's exactly what Zillow did to NAR when they hired that guy. Let me continue. Spencer Rakoff, the Zill Group CEO, quarterly third earnings on a transcript on a conference call, Seeking Alpha. By the way, you're going to see me quoting, gang, other financial publications, because one of the things that I do is I invest in the stock market as a side thing. And so I'm always, I'm, what I'm sharing with you is what the financial world outside of the real estate world, what they say when they look into our industry. And here's one of the things that they said, Zillow Group is moving for, further down the funnel and closer to the transaction during this period of transformational innovation. In 2019, Zillow Group will be a larger business that is much more integrated into the consumer's entire home life cycle. I'm gonna, this is a screenshot from one of the meetings when Spencer was still the CEO and he showed this in the meeting 
the, if you'll notice, we've got buyers and sellers and renters and homeowners and real estate agents, property managers, mortgage brokers. Who's in the middle of it all? Zillow. And I love their expression. How it says living database of all homes. Zillow wants to be in the center of everything. Let's continue. Um, I saw this on there. This is current, by the way. This is just a, a, a week ago. For builders who are not already working with an agent or not currently listing spec homes in an MLS, Zillow listing services will be an alternative option. You've heard, we all know what MLS stands for, right? Multiple listing service. Well, what about ZLS? Zillow listing service. Interesting. Okay. Uh, this is the Motley Fool. Again, one of these uh, publications outside of our world in the financial planning world. It, this was February of 2020. Zillow pursues brokerage license that it swears it doesn't want. I want you to see this. It says, I'm going to read it to you. It's a little fine print. Zillow maintains it doesn't want to be a real estate brokerage, but as it acquires brokerage license across the country, its fourth quarter earnings report shows it is but a step away from achieving that status. That would mark an important milestone for the real estate information side because it would leave little reason for agents to not hang their shingle with Zillow. At that point, it would, it would completely own the entire real estate transaction from beginning to end. So gang, what I hope you're getting, what you're seeing is people outside of our bubble, people in the financial world looking into the real estate industry, they see the writing on the wall that Zillow wants to control it all. By the way, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just bringing the facts to you. As we all know that Zillow has now real estate licenses in every part of the, uh, the country. Uh, if you look at other articles like Risk Media, Zillow said no intention of becoming a brokerage in 2017, launches Zillow Homes in 220. VentureBeat, when Zillow Uberized the $100 billion real estate brokerage, can they do that? Interesting, Uberized, Game Changer, Zillow to begin buying and selling houses, housing or Here's another, Biz Journal, how Zillow wants to Uberize real estate brokerages by cutting out the middlemen. I wonder who the middlemen is. Gang, you know how you belong to real estate brokerage? Zillow is no longer a media company. Zillow is a broker. I want that to sink in because we're talking about giving money to, uh, to a competitor. Um, and remember what they said? We're not, we come in peace, man. We come in peace. We're not an MLS. We don't compete with brokers. We don't compete with MLSs. <laughs> oh man, we sell ads. If you go to Zillow's website, every article that you see will be driving, every blog article is driving people to list or sell their home with Zillow. I love this, one of their articles I stumbled on, alternatives to a selling agent's contract. Alternatives, instead of listing with an agent, let us just buy your home for you. Uh, and PR Newswire, Zillow offers, here, watch this. Starting in January of this year, customers in Atlanta, Phoenix, and Tucson who sell homes through Zillow offers will work directly with a trusted licensed employee of Zillow Homes, a licensed broker identity. Zillow owned homes in these markets will be listed for sale by licensed Zillow employees. See, anybody that knows before, if Zillow used homes, right, and they were going to flip the property, they would list it with a local agent. No longer. They are now buying the property and they're going to sell it themselves. They are not listing with an agent anymore because they have employees. And here are the states that Zillow Homes has these specific brokerages. Now, if you don't see your state there, don't worry. You will soon. Let's continue on with this. This is from Zillow's um, press area of their website. You'll notice the, the web, in Zillow Homes, they got a for sale sign. There's no more premier agent now because you can look at a property directly with Zillow. Here's another thing. I love this. They're advertising, promote, promoting family using a Zillow self-tour technology. Like you can go look at properties now through their self-tour technology. They have this thing on their website called the B-roll. For those of you who don't know what that expression is, it's when a company is going to write a commercial uh, or film something. They do a lot of film stock. 
but they haven't edited yet or put the voiceover or the music yet. So this is a B-roll that without the audio or music, but imagine a homeowner or a buyer sitting in their living room and they turn on and this commercial comes on that says, hey, listen, if you want to tour our house using Zillow's tour technology, you can do it without having a hassle of scheduling an appointment with this agent and just do it when it's good for you. Now, if you can't possibly make it to the property, at, by the leisure of your own couch, you can use Zillow's virtual tour where you can get to see the property at your own leisure. Now, of course, if you would like to have a more guided tour, we can have one of our Zillow paid employees so you can control which room you're seeing and give instructions to the employee how you'd like to see the home. And of course, when you're ready to finally buy one of a Zillow listed homes, you can do that with one of our licensed paid employees who will be more than happy to get you your house. With Zillow Homes, we are transforming the real estate industry. Yes. Imagine that is the commercial to come. As a matter of fact, as I did more research on this, I was there's a lot of commercials that Zillow has out there. And let me just remind you that they said they're not a competing broker. They're not interested in listing, listing properties or being an MLS. They're a media company. Well, that's partly true. They have a lot of media right now. These are the current snapshots of all the commercials that Zillow is running online and other places. So you may not see it so obvious, but there's commercials out there that's definitely sending the message that Zillow wants to be in the center of everything. What can we do as an industry? What can you do as a real estate professional? I'm going to give you three choices. Whenever you're faced with a relationship that you're not okay with, there's usually one of three choices that you can do. You can do. You could actually do two or three, but here are the three choices. You can either accept the way it is, just accept it and just be okay with it somehow. You can actually leave it if it's not working for you, or you can try and change it in some fashion. Let me go through these three choices when it comes to the Zillow becoming a broker, accepting it. Well, one of the things you can do is leave it up to our leadership. You know, our leadership at NAR that they've got this, um, Got your back on this. Well, let me share some information with you I think is interesting. And um, this is our current CEO of NAR, Bob Goldberg. Bob said uh, just not too long ago, 2000, uh, May 2019, so just about two years ago, that he said he's not terrified of Zillow. As a matter of fact, Bob, our leader, is uh, more concerned about mom and pop startups and guys or gals in the garage building totally new disruptive proper, d d um, products. So Bob's not worried about Zillow, but he's worried about that. Okay, so let's just look at something. Um, uh, uh, Swan and Pool puts out a report about the most um, influential leaders in our industry, executives. And uh, when you look at the one that he just published in 2021 this year, um, you'll notice that Bob is number eight. Now, uh, to me, that's a little concerning simply because you would think the CEO of essentially uh, our industry uh, should be number one. So number eight is concerning. But what's really more concerning for me is that number one is the current CEO of Zillow, Rich Barton. Um, Zillow just bought showing time. Now, this has been a red flag for a lot of people in the know because Zillow, if they're a media company, like really, if that's what they are, why would they be buying a company that has all of this data about people buying and selling and their habits and getting into properties and scheduling time? Like that's a lot of great data for a company beyond a media company. Well, for a brokerage, that's gold actually. But what's really concerning, uh, or should be, is that Showing Time has a contract with NAR. Um, so why is that okay that Zillow, which is essentially uh, Zillow MLS, um, why is it okay that they're buying this product that we have a contract with? Uh, I, this is real disturbing. I just discovered it this weekend, so this is some new information. There's a house that came up for sale in my neighborhood uh, just Saturday. So today's Monday, so two days ago. Uh, I was curious to know what, what that house was going for because it's in my neighborhood. When I went to realtor.com, um, there's the address in Waiting River. When I went there, it says it's off the market. 
So I thought that there was a sign on the front lawn of an agent, an MLS agent, a realtor. And, and I was, thought that was odd. Okay, maybe they didn't put it into the MLS yet, I thought. But just out of curiosity, let me go check out what's happening over at Zillow. So I punched in the address at Zillow. And uh, to my dismay, there's the listing right there on Zillow. And you'll notice on the screen too, they're getting the data from my local MLS. Now, here's what I would like to know. How is that home listed with my local MLS and Zillow has it, but NARrealtor.com doesn't have it? How is that even okay on any level? I'm sorry, I'm getting a little passionate. I've been told not to get so passionate just to give you the facts. But ladies and gentlemen, what really is like, I teach agents how to list for sale by owners and why a homeowner should list with a realtor. And I used to tell agents, you tell a homeowner that Zillow data is not as accurate as realtor.com is. That realtor.com is the Amazon of real estate. That's what I've told my agents to say on listing appointments. But yet this listing has been on the market for two days, has 510 views, 16 saves on Zillow, but not on realtor.com. Why? And I checked it an hour before I came onto this webinar to make sure that I was giving you right information. So, uh, you know, as far as uh, accepting that our leadership has got our back, I don't know if that's a good idea. So let's go to the second option, which is maybe change it. Maybe you change it so you become a leader. Now I'm not talking about like you run for being to become CEO of NAR or the president of NAR. I'm not saying that. I'm going to actually pull a, a, a page out of Gary Keller because up until recently, Gary has been really one of our leaders that's been really screaming about this, saying how, listen, when you write a check to Zillow, you're actually voting for a Zillow world. So one, I'm going to share with you two suggestions that he gave at his uh, Keller Williams family reunion because I think these are really great ideas. If let's say you become a more of a leader in your local MLS and um, you did something like this where you can petition, uh, be vocal about changing the display rules that the listing agent is prominently displayed, even have maybe the second photo of a listing be uh, an ad, if you will, an image of the listing agent. So that way the listing agent is getting credit for that listing. Now, the reason why that is very powerful idea is because that would essentially make Zillow's premier agent uh, model not work because now we are giving the leads to the listing agent. Here's the second option is advocating with your MLS, the end the partnership with showing time, it replaced with Century Key Showing. By the way, I was gonna say this later, I'll say it now, Century Key Showing. Do you know who, whose company Century Key is? That's NAS. So in other words, NAR has a product that competes with showing time. It's the same product, but yet for some reason, we have a contract with a competing product when we actually have the product. Who did that deal? Uh, I'm not supposed to be getting upset. I'm just supposed to be giving you the facts, but Century Key Show and Service, there you go. There it is. This is a NAR product. All right. So becoming a leadership in your MLS, here's the last thing you can do, and that's leave it. Stop giving your money to your competitor Zillow. Now, let me just say something about this because uh, Investopia, or another one of these uh, financial publications said that Zillow relies heavily on the ad revenue from Premier Agent Program. Revenue could seriously suffer if agents stop seeing the value. You've, I told you, you've got the financial world outside of our business saying, geez, if Zillow lost Premier Agent, I know my stock will go down because Premier Agent right now counts for almost 90% of their gross profit. This would basically take that out. But now, let me just cover a couple of things because I added this here because I know some of you have this two misconceptions or confusions or questions. I want to address it now. Now we can't talk about Zillow because they are not a member and they are now a member of NAR. And because of the code of ethics, we can't talk about bad about Zillow. This is false. Let me clarify. See, first of all, um, we're not talking bad about Zillow, the brokerage. So we're talking about Zillow, the media company, Premier agent. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about the broker, Zillow, the broker. We're not talking about, about the broker. So uh, we're talking about the meeting company. So that's fine. We can do that. We can talk about another vendor. If we're not happy. We're not even talking bad about them. We're just saying, stop giving money 
to premier agents because they're using that money to build their brokerage. And by the way, it doesn't even say that in the code of ethics. It does not say that we can't talk about a fellow realtor. That is also one of the biggest misconceptions in our industry. And I hear it all the time. Let's take a look at the actual code of ethics and what it actually says. The code of ethics says, Article 15, that a realtor cannot knowingly or recklessly make false or misleading statements about another real estate professional, their business or their business practice. We are not making a false or misleading representation. We're talking factual. We're talking factual about the money that we're given. We shouldn't be doing. Let's, let me show you something else. This over here is a clip from an interview that uh, Rich did with uh, CNBC. Just to clarify what he says about, well, let's just go, let's to go back to the core business, the advertising yes. business, which which remains uh, very strong and essentially is being used to fund That's right. the, the new business. That's right. Did, does yeah, did you hear that? So he, he, Richard said, yes, that's right. That's right. We're using the money from our advertising company. That's your money, Premier Agent. And it's using to finance the growth of the brokerages and the other aspects of Zillow. So our money is helping fund your competitor. Here's the second thing. We can't talk about boycott and Zillow because that is against the antitrust laws. That's another common thing that I hear about people. That's so wrong. That is so wrong. Let me clarify why, why that is so wrong. <clears throat> First of all, little, a little known information about Boycott. This guy over here is actually Captain Charles Boycott. This guy is where we got the term to boycott other people or businesses. Now, this is really interesting when I discovered this. Who is Captain Charles Boycott? He uh, was uh, worked for the British Army. He retired. And you know what he became when he retired? <coughs> a land agent in Ireland. In other words... This guy over here became a real estate agent in Ireland when he retired out of the army. <laughs> the irony is so thick. And here's where the concept about boycotting. The concept about boycotting is con it's concerning laws that regulate the way businesses operate. And as far as being giving people the freedom to compete against one another. So in other words, if let's say a broker agreed with another broker or several brokers to boycott a broker, that would be bad. That is antitrust. You can't do that. But if let's say a group of brokers decided to stop doing business with another vendor, uh, somebody out the a media company, for example, that's okay. We can do that. As a matter of fact, if you look, we boycott things all the time. Uh, the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955, where a group of Africans, the 75% of the people riding the Montgomery bus were African-Americans. They, they were segregated. They said, no more, we're not riding the buses. They stopped riding, giving their money to the bus company. And, and because of that, they found it was unconstitutional to segregate on, with buses. Here's enough. We hear it all the time about boycotting all of these corporations. We, this part of being American now, we'll call it cancel culture. But it's the same thing. If you're not happy, like the Farmers Association, they wanted to boycott Wendy's because they didn't sign on to something, uh, the fast food, all the other fast food restaurants about fair uh, work environment for farmers and Wendy's held out. So people were boycotting Wendy's. Or when Peter said boycott SeaWorld because of their treatment of workers. And of course, that changed that. Um, you've got Nike because of their uh, problems with child workers and human right abuses. People boycotted them. That changed that. Our, our, our previous presidents said boycott good tires, boycott Coca-Cola. You've got the uh, Major League Baseball saying we're boycotting Atlanta because of their. And my point here is, gang, as a community, as real estate professionals, it is not illegal for us to stand up and say, you know what, this is not okay. I choose to not give my money to a company that's going to use that money to compete against me. It doesn't make sense to do that. Are we, is there a problem? I heard a, a volume thing. No, 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 I'm just agreeing with you. Uh, uh, oh, you're there, Catherine. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. How, how am I, is this making sense here, Catherine? Yes, absolutely. But wait, there's more. So here's the specific strategies that I encourage us to start doing, okay? First of all, is stop give, give our businesses to companies that support us, like Realtor.com, CenturyLock, ListHub, Move, Moving.com. Like give biz, money to other businesses that support 
our, what our model and what we do. Realtor.com has a great place. If you want to buy leads, do it at Realtor.com. Um, there's a group that a lot of people may not know about, and that's Reach. It's part of NAR. It's like an incubation. Like they give money to companies to help get them started or to bring them to another level. There's a whole list like Wilopo, Edworks, Curbio. These are company, um, Box Brownie. These are companies that Zillow has helped give some seed money or growth money to bring their businesses to the next level. These are businesses that we should be looking at. Wilopo, as I said, is a great example. If you want social media leads, look at that company. Now, not every company is going to work for everybody. Real Geeks is another one. You start to look at here, here, listen, gang, here's the point that I'm trying to make here. If let's say you work for, um, Catherine, you work for, uh, your, your company is Keller Williams. Am I right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me ask some Catherine, would you give $10,000 a month to Remax to advertise for you? No, that doesn't matter. Well, I know you had to pause and think, why yeah. would I do that, Daryl? Exactly. That's exactly what an agent does when they give their money to premier agents. They're actually because, again, Zillow is no longer an media company only. They are a real estate brokerage looking to list and sell real estate like any broker. Here's some other companies. Let me, uh, by the way, this Real Geeks, they, they help drive business to Facebook or to Google. Um, HomeSnap, they have it, whoever the listing age. The listing agent is that's who's getting the leads. That isn't that how it should be that the listing agent is the one that gets the leads, not not a, uh, another agent paying to grab leads from a listing agent, which is that model. Listing, so there's a whole bunch. I'm going to tell everybody how to get a copy of these slides because there's so much that I'm going over here. Home, this one, sync. Let me tell you, sync. Sync is a great company because they are at war with uh, <laughs> Zillow. So, what is that expression? The enemy of my enemy is my, uh, my friend. Is, am I saying that right? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's the sense here. Zinc, uh, Sync, uh, Sync wants to really capture this market. So that's another company to look at. We have a whole, I have a whole slide deck of other companies, but I don't have time to go through them all. So I'm going to tell everybody how to get a copy of these slides in a minute. Let's now talk about Zillow offers. Zillow offers, um, let me show you some stuff about Zillow offers. And by the way, Catherine, you're a power agent as well. I did a whole one hour thing about iBuyers and it's in the power program website for our students, but we're, we're not going to get into that right now. So let me give you, pull some of the highlights from that recording that we did. First of all, what we know about buyers, so we're switching gears now about Zillow offers, gang. What we know about buyers is buyers buy with emotion, but investors buy for a profit. So I'm going to say that again. Buyers buy with emotion. Investors buy for a profit. I buyers are investors. As a matter of fact, gang, we should not be calling them I buyers. We should actually be calling them I investors. Because when Zillow offers, for example, is buying a home, they are not buying a home. They're buying a house and they're not moving into it. They're buying it for one purpose is to flip the house, to make money. That's the job of Zillow is to make money. That's what they function as. So I investors are going to offer less than what a homeowner could actually sell a house for on their own. So selling for, to, a, 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 to a Zillow offers or any I inv uh, investor because it's quick is not a good idea. I'll show you the numbers in a second. I investors are representing their best interest. Their focus is making the most amount of money that they can from the seller. That's what they're committing. Listen what I just said. Z I buyers, I investors are representing their best interest, not the homeowners. Their job is to get it at the best possible price for them. Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, as your agent, my commitment is to you. I have your best interest in mind. What I do is to benefit you, not to benefit me. We represent the seller's best interest. That's the punchline there. Now, I'm going to show you something here. And by the way, Catherine, I had this screenshot is actually from Zillow's website when it comes to Zillow's offer. And I just pulled this off their site a couple of weeks ago. So I don't know if they changed it after they watch this webinar, maybe they will. Let me just show you. They're saying, if you go with Zillow versus a traditional agent, you're gonna pay a 6% uh, seller's cost, come 6% to an agent or 6% to Zillow. Now I don't have to tell you gang, 
there's some agents that they would die for six <laughs> percent. That's not always the case that we're getting the listings for, but they're saying, okay, agents get six percent, Zillow gets six percent. But look at this, they got at the bottom Zillow service charge on average is two and a half percent. So watch this, Mr. And Mrs. Hana Hana, when you sell your house to Zillow offer. And if you think you're not paying, well, I don't want to work with an agent because I don't want to pay an agent a commission. Well, actually, you're paying Zillow an eight and a half percent commission. I don't care if they call it a service fee or what, it's a commission. And here's the, here's the wackadoo part of this. Would you, Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, would you pay a buyer? Let's say you're a FISBO and a buyer comes in off of your ad and they say, well, buy your house but we want you to pay us, the buyers, eight and a half permission, eight and a half percent commission. Would you do that? That's exactly what you're doing when you sell your house to the buyer called Zillow Offers. They're charging six, eight and a half percent to buy your house. But wait, there's more. Knowing your numbers, this is from the, I'm not going to get lost in the weeds over here. If you, this is on their, Zillow's website, when you look at the numbers and they're doing a dollar for dollar compa comparison, they actually will show you, at the, I got to look at the bottom here, that actually with a traditional agent, you'll net about, I don't know, about a thousand to uh, seven, eight or $15,000 more. So they're a little honest there saying that with a traditional agent, you're probably will net more money. But actually, if you look at the math in this chart, it's actually not very accurate. It's actually even more because they kind of fudge the numbers. So they give you, they make it easy. They give you a blank form. You print out the blank form. You can use this form as an objection handling technique to show a homeowner how they will net less money by actually selling to Zillow offers. You know, MarketWatch, another one of those financial publications that said outside of the, you know, that's looking into our industry, they said that the uh, I buyers are actually down that whole industry by 48%. Uh, why? Because in this hot seller's market, why would you sell to an I buyer? Yeah, I mean, this market is so hot. You list with an agent, the amount of buyers that we're bringing, we have a, a, a trove of buyers that are waiting to buy your house. A trove for top dollar. Why would you discount your house eight and a half percent to sell to Zillow? That doesn't make any sense. Let's talk about Zillow estim as estimates. I love this because I'm going to switch over this. I'm going to go past this. This is one of the scripts that we give our power agents. I'm going to just zoom in on part of the script when it comes to handling this, this estimate. When a homeowner says, I know what my house is worth. It's worth more than what you tell me because his, because his estimate says it is. I appreciate that, Mrs. Hana or Mr. Hana. The reason they call it his estimate, a Zillow estimate, is because that's exactly what it is. It's an estimate. It's not a real number. A homeowner can make a tremendous mistake if they use that estimate. Let me explain. When you sell your house and a buyer wants to buy it, they're going to give you 20% maybe of the sales price, and they're going to go to the bank for the other 80%. So when you think about it, the bank is more vested than the individual buyer. And banks don't use estimates. They send out a licensed appraiser who has a, a certain level of training and uses a specific formula to come up with the objective fair market value of your home. This estimates is, is really just a marketing thing. You should not look at that number at all because that's all it is, it's marketing. It's just to get people's eyeballs on, the, on, on their site. See, let me show you something. If you go to Zillow Offers uh, website, they'll actually tell you right there, your estimate, that first paragraph, is an estimate of the home's value based on public records, market condition, any other additional facts. But when it comes to Zillow offers, well, we factor in this estimate while also considering the other following to arrive at the correct, correct price. We rely on a local broker, in-person evaluation, interior features. In other words, they're getting all twisted in the winds because now they're finding themselves in, in a bit of a, a, a snafu over here because you got Zillow estimate, but they're basically saying, Mr. Ms. Hano, if you sell your house to Zillow offers, uh, we're not going to pay you what we say this estimate is. It's probably going to be less. <laughs> to, to, even Spencer Raskoff, the CEO of Zillow, he said to determine a more accurate opinion of a home value, you should hire a real estate agent. Even he said, the CEO said you should use estimate because you want to know why he said that? Because when Spencer sold his home, he sold his home for 40% less. The, well, sorry, the CEO, I got so excited. The CEO of Zillow when he sold his own home, he sold it for 40% less than what the Zestimate said at the time his house was worth. 
So what do we what do we learn about Zestimus? <laughs> don't don't <laughs> use them. Don't use them at all because it's not real. So what can we do to uh, beat Zillow? And that is by building solid relationships. Catherine, you and I were talking about this on one of our calls. Is we got to get get really good at building relationships with our community. And let me give you guys some ideas that we give our power agents. Number one is send out annual anniversary cards to all of your deals. Every year, send them an anniversary card. Now, power agents, they have a plethora of cards that we have in our program. Well, for example, the anniversary card is one of them. You can send out an anniversary letter with maybe a coupon. But the point here, gang, is make sure you bond closely. You know, one of the things we did, uh, for Catherine, for the power agents is we created a bonding program. I don't have time to go over all this, but it's like prior to the closing, you might request a testimonial letter for them. Three days after the closing, you handwrite them a thank you note. 14 days, send them a gift certificate from a local business. 60 days, give them another gift certificate or maybe stop by. We call them smile stops. But here's the concept that I want to give you, gang, is when you have a closing with one of your buyers or sellers, that's the time for you to actually make sure that you bond really tight with them. So for the next 12 months, they should hear from you several times. So that way, if they hear of anybody who's thinking about buying or selling, they're going to think of you. You got to remind them who you are. Okay. So make sure you're doing those anniversary cards with your clients. Number two is offer a complete neighborhood market report. This is something Zestimate can't do. You know, one of our favorite things that we promote to our students is telling every homeowner they should have a neighborhood market report. Now, that is the same as a CMA, but we call it in our company, neighborhood market report, because it sounds different. It's, it says what it is in the title. It's a neighborhood market report. A lot of civilians, CMA, they can't relate to what that means, but a, a report about the neighborhood and the market, that makes sense to them. So, you know, telling homeowners, you should have a, a market, a neighborhood market report on your home once a year, just like you have a physical done once a year, you should have that done on your house. Uh, one of the best uh, tools that our dues pays for as realtors is the Realtor Properties Resource, RPR. Gang, RPR is the bomb. This is, to me, the best. There is a lot of companies that, ha uh, uh, that have where well, you can pay for CMAs and they can make them look really nice and beautiful, blah, blah, blah. Well, let me tell you something. As much as I love those companies, this one here is the bomb because it is so awesome, so in-depth, and it's free. It's part of being a realtor, right? We are so sold on them. We actually had some of their staff members do for our power agents a dedicated tutorial that answered questions the whole nine yards on how to use it. They just launched some new features, and we wanted to help roll that out. So we're a big fan of RPR and the people over, over in that part of NAR. You're doing an awesome job. So- Offer complete neighborhood market reports to your neighborhood that you're working. Negotiate with local vendors. You know, help your local vendors build their business, build a relationship with them. Perhaps you, you can talk to a bakery and say, hey, listen, can you give my clients uh, a discount when it's their birthday? I'll mail out a postcard or a flyer that says, hey, happy birthday. It makes me look good. It makes you look good. You're not paying for the ad. You just discount your cake by whatever number you want to do and you send out a postcard if you want. Um, so anyway, do work with local vendors and get discounts and promote the vendor while at the same time giving it of something of value to your community. Stream uh, your public open houses. Uh, this is powerful to do that because the market is so hot. There's so many people going to these open houses. And when neighbors see a line of people in front of houses like this, my goodness, let me tell you something, what's beautiful about this, like this picture here, every person on that block is looking out their window and they wanna know what the heck is going on with this Keller Williams guy over here. He's got an open house. Look at, what are they giving away? Gold in that house? It's incredible. You think this is gonna generate some interest? It's gonna generate some calls? Absolutely, absolutely. So use your open houses as a way to promote and market you. This is powerful. Now let me share some, another one. And that is quarterly smile stops. Now, what a smile stop, uh, some of my colleagues will call it a pop by or something. We call them smile stops because we have an acronym for smile. I won't get into it now, but it basically 
when you go to see somebody face to face, you want to give them a smile, you give them a gift. It helps build a relationship. It connects with them. You know, we give our power agents a whole bunch of different smile stops. For example, uh, you know, there's the peeps. You know, you're one of my favorite peeps. This is a little gift with a little funny thing. This is your, your referrals are the highlight of my day with a little referral and a business card. These are little cute things you can actually put together, maybe some value added flyers. These are easy to do. You print them out, you customize it, curb appeal on a budget. This is good. A lot of people are starting to, they're go, they're, because especially in the Northeast where it's getting a little nicer out, people are doing all these home improvement things. What's going to give you the highest return on your time? and your money spent on improving your house. So these are little packages you can put together and do some door knocking and give those people these gifts. So quarterly smile stops to your top clients. You spend more money on the quarterly ones. Uh, be a total resource for people's real estate needs. This is a people business. You know, one of the things that uh, Zillow doesn't have that we have is they're a corporation. You know, boots on the ground, belly to belly, face to face, buyers and sellers. That's the value that we have. We have to up our game though. We have to up our game. So consider having vendors that you recommend. When people are looking for a landscaper and they're looking for a mortgage company or a mason or electrician, make sure you've got a good team of people that homeowners would be interested in that you can refer business to, recommend, promote. You see, be an ultimate resource. You know, one of the ideas, what this letter is, is our, we gave to our students is, you know, staging. When we think of staging, we think when you sell a house, you stage a house. What about people who don't want to sell the house, but maybe they can use an opinion on staging that they can use to, to, to improve their home a little bit. Maybe you talk to a stage and say, I want to promote your business to everybody in the community. I ask that you give me a discount. These people may not be wanting to sell. They just want, but they'll hire you for the service. So that's another thing you can do as an example. Number seven is host client events. You know, again, belly to belly, boots on the ground. You know, you know how inexpensive it is to, to now this is going to change as movie theaters open up more. But right now you can actually uh, where I'm look, you can rent the whole movie theater for for just a few hundred dollars. What if you hold an event for some of your top clients where you rent the movie theater and there's social distancing? How awesome, impressive would that be? So hosting events is another item and that's put everyone on your monthly e-newsletter. Again, you want to remind people what you do for a living, your definition of self-promotion, have people know your name, face, what you do for a living. So part of what you want to do is keep promoting yourself so people keep remembering what you do. Um, make sure the new e-newsletters, powerful, powerful strategy with its value in it. Your face is there. You're establishing yourself as an expert with that. Um, next thing is uh, number nine, print monthly mailing newsletters. So you may want to consider actually what's old is new again actually printing out newsletters and sending that. People love mail now. When people open up their email, they're committed to deleting, not committed to opening. But mail, I, every time I go to my, my, my mailbox, it's like uh, I'm interested. Like for some reason, I, it's not junk mail to me. I actually get less mail now. So when I, I, I pay attention more. So we tell our power agents, send out, maybe print out newsletters. Like we wrote all these newsletters for the power agents. Like yeah, here's April, here's May, here's June. Like nice quality, good quality newsletters you send out on a monthly basis. And here's, in addition to all of this, I'm going, now, now uh, Catherine, I'm going to show this and then I'm going to sum up our message today. And then I'm going to open up to questions if people have questions. In addition, you just want to be a good agent. You know, like Catherine, you're good. You're a great agent. Just being good would be great for some people. So here's some suggestions on how to be just a really good agent is make sure you return your calls and your messages. You do it promptly. You know, every time somebody leaves your message and they're waiting, they're waiting to hear back, they start to question about how effective you are as a business person. So make sure you get back to people quickly. Don't have full voicemails. It's amazing how some agents, they actually they think that if people can't leave them a message because their mess voicemail is so full that somehow that shows that they're so busy they can't get to all their messages. Actually, it sends a message that you're not running your business effectively is what that means. Uh, verify your listing data. Please, oh, please, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of my bonus uh, uh, that I have is there's so much bad data out there, uh, agents. I mean, if you're getting paid tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars in a commission, you need to know how to fill out a form and verify the information correctly. At least we should be doing that correctly. Uh, use virtual tours on your listings. Because listen, if we're gonna compete 
with uh, Zillow or other companies. We've got to up our game, ladies and gentlemen. You hear what I'm saying? We've got to up our game. There should not be one that listing that you get that doesn't have virtual tour, truly. You should get in the half. Daryl, this market is so hot. I don't have to do that. No, it doesn't matter. You got to up your game. It's got to be part of, I mean, this market is so hot. Does that mean you don't take photos? You don't put photos on your listing? So you need to, it doesn't matter if it's a hot market or not. You need to up your game. Label your photos and photo of every, every room. So here's what I mean. First of all, you should take photos of every room. I, I was looking at houses this weekend uh, for our family. And I was shocked on how some of the rooms were not taking photos of basements, bedrooms, like they just weren't even there. That's blows my mind. You should be, have a photo of every room in the house, basement included. I don't care if it's finished or not finished. The other thing is you should label your photos. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you something, when a buyer's looking at houses, they don't know if they're looking at the same bedroom, is this bedroom upstairs, downstairs? They don't know the, the layout of the property of the home. So just putting a label on, in the photo. So when it gets picked up online, your MLS may do it. No, 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 I'm saying on the photo itself. So when it gets picked up on social media, that label is part of the photo. OK, uh, one of the things our power agents did every property they take now, they actually have a sketch, a floor plan, like a blueprint of the layout of the first floor and second floor. Great idea. Show up on time for all your appointments. Be the best dressed in the room. Catherine, every time I see you, you look like a million bucks and you see <laughs> Catherine. I'm telling you, you do. And, you know and, what? You know what the funny thing is? I got voted last year best dressed realtor in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. Very impressive. And by the way, I see, I don't have you on my screen right now. For, I can't see you again, but you have your color. What's your color you got? Is it te teal? What turquoise. Color? Turquoise teal, yeah. Turquoise. That's your color. Yep. I, I, every, and you brand yourself. This is smart. You see, it's a, listen, gang, it's the little things you do that make a difference. I said this to our power agents on our call because I have Monday coaching calls with our students. I said, that little extra you do is like a lady who's getting dressed and she puts earrings on. You know, you take the earring off, it doesn't look, but you put the earring on, boy, it can make the whole outfit. It's the little things that can make the outfit that makes the agent um, know your inventory. That's important. This is what you do for a living. You should know your inventory backwards and forwards, left and right. So that's what we can do to help combat what we can, what's happening now with Zillow being a broker. I'm going to show, I'm going to sum up this and then I'm going to open up to questions for anybody that has questions. This over, you know, I want you to just remember back in the day, gang, CNBC did this great report about malls in the United States. And if you remember back in the day, for those of us that used to go to malls, they were so packed. As a matter of fact, back in 87, malls and shopping complex accounted for over 50% of all retail. You'd go to the malls, you'd hang out with your friends, you'd go maybe to the movies and, and, and you'd see other things, you'd listen to music or you'd go to the food court. We went to malls when we were younger as an experience. It was not just a shop, it was actually a hangout. And then of course, Amazon came out. I'm not anti Amazon, I love Amazon. Thank God for Amazon during the pandemic. But when Amazon came out and they started to grow, I'm sure the malls and the store owners did not think that Amazon would actually put them out of business. This video you're watching now is a ghost town of a mall, but I want you to know this mall, this video you're watching right now, it's cur it was open when it was being filmed. In other words, this is not a closed mall. Look at VisionWorks down the bottom there. There's nobody at the store. There's this woman behind the counter trying to offer the cameraman a little something to try and food. This is the food court. And you'll just see one person sitting at a table in what is essentially a ghost town of a mall. What has happened is because of Amazon, we went from these bustling malls to literally ghost towns of, of, of these businesses. I'm not saying Amazon is bad. I'm not, I am, I love, love Amazon. I said that already. But I'm, the point that I'm trying to make is I'm sure that these malls did not anticipate this happening to them. And by the way, this mall in Northern Virginia closed in 2017, meaning that had nothing to do with the pandemic. I just wanted to clarify that. It was because of this new business model called Amazon. Ladies and gentlemen, Amazon, I mean, Zillow is in my opinion, the Amazon of real estate. 
And by the way, Rich Barton, he's a great, he's, I'm sure he's a great guy. He's a smart businessman, that's for sure. The other company that, that Rich created, so he created Zillow. But what, his other company that, that Rich Barton created is a company you probably heard of called Expedia. What Expedia did to the travel agent industry, I don't know, man. To me, the writing's on the wall. Um, so to summarize, Stop feeding the lion with your money with Premier Agent. I'm using the term lion from our past president uh, of Mr. Chi. Now, when I heard this, uh, when I heard his speech about the lion, I thought about an Indian proverb about a son, uh, an Indian chief was teaching his son that every day there's, everybody has two wolves, a good wolf and a bad wolf. You know, the bad wolf is, is jealous and anger and, um, and, and lies and selfish. And the good wolf is about joy and, and giving and caring. And every day, every day, these two wolves battle to see who wins. And the little child asked his father, he said, well, dad, who wins? And the Indian chief said, the wolf that gets fed is the one that wins. I say, stop feeding the wolf, the lion over the hill. Stop giving your money to Premier Agent and use it in other things. Make some changes in your own, local MLS. That's what you can do. You, everybody watching this can advocate in your board and in your MLS to make some changes. Just that simple change and prominently displaying the listing agent, that's a big, that would be a big game changer. Get stronger at your marketing yourself and get belly to belly with people and become invaluable, become an invaluable resource to your buyers and sellers in your market. So, Catherine, that's what I got about what to do now that Zillow is a competing broker. How do we do? I love it. That's great. So, some people may have some questions. By the way, everybody, if you tell, oh, listen, I forgot this. Um, and we're, if you have questions, I want you to write it um, down, but I'm going to show you. There's some other slides as part of this, which has articles where I got some of my information, some other companies that we recommend. If anybody wants to get a copy of this, if you just go to that, that um, uh, Kiyama, where is it here? Ugh. If you go to that darylspeaks.com forward slash trial, Julie, maybe we can write that in the, in the chat. And yeah. uh, if you guys go to that, you can get a copy of the slides. You become a power agent for five bucks. You help Feeding America, this whole good thing. Just go to that site and, uh, and that'll help you. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see. There we are, Catherine. You know, Catherine, that, this was so hard for me to do this webinar because the whole time when I went to share my screen, your face went away. I couldn't see anything. I just saw my camera. So I'm, I'm now glad I feel, to see you. I, I feel for you. Uh, it was horrible. It was horrible. I just saw, I didn't even see me. And I could, I love looking at me. So. <laughs> but anyway. you did great. No, that, that was really awesome. We just need to provide more value. We need to provide, provide more value. We need to stop feeding this company. Listen, once again, I'm not anti Zillow. Listen, if they're a broker, that's great, man. See, if I was saying we shouldn't show their listings, ah, that's an antitrust. I ain't saying yeah. it. I'm saying, no, let's work with them. They want to be a broker. They want to be a realtor. Come on in. Yeah, they can be. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. But I am not going to give my money. If I'm Keller Williams, I'm not giving my money to Colwell Banker to work against me. I mean, that's just, no. that's just stupid. And that's what any age. And you know what? Here's the thing. I got to say this, Catherine. There was, I saw somebody at Lab Coat say this. Uh, I hope I don't mess this up. But they said, giving money to Zillow as an agent is like, if you want to give, give yourself the benefit of time and give money to your spouse to go out and have dinner so you have some time, that's your benefit. But meanwhile, your spouse is taking that money and bringing the, 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 the cheating person, their boyfriend or girlfriend out to dinner, and then they marry the, the person they're cheating and throw you out of the house. That's exactly what's happening here. We're giving <laughs> money to Zillow, and the benefit is maybe advertising, but uh, the drawback is, is that eventually we're going to be thrown out of our house because they don't need us anymore, right? Anyway. Yeah, and, and there's only that much a uh, uh, virtual company can do. They are that's not, they're, they don't have the same human connection. That's that, just my That's thought. true, that's true, that's true. All right, let's see if we got any questions. Does anybody have any questions, Jake or Julie or? 
Do you want me, me to read them out or Catherine, do you want to do that? I don't, where would I see them? I'm only on in the, the chat. Screen. So you'd have to scroll it up. I can, I can oh, read them. Okay. Yeah, read them. <laughs> um, is Zillow paying a premium to NAR for this data? Is Zillow off what? Is, are they paying, paying a, a premium, premium to NAR for the data? Let me tell you something. I want you all to go online right now after this webinar and go to three ring neck court waiting river. I want you to do, go to realtor.com and search for three ring neck court waiting river. Then I want you to go to Zillow and type it in and you'll see what I showed you. Now to answer your question, is, is Zillow paying for premier stuff? I don't know. Are they pay? I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not that smart. I don't know what's happening in the ivory tower with these companies. I think but what they I do. do, I think they do because uh they have a, a fee uh, fee, and if we were to lobby that the listing agent were displayed first on their page, they right. would reduce that fee. So yes, I think that uh, to NAR, I'm not sure, but to the MLS, I know the MLS has uh, gets a fee from anybody that feeds the IDX because I am with Chime for CRM and they okay. have to pay a fee to my MLS for, in order to get the feed. So okay. I'm sure that, you know, the, you know, the MLS also profits from it. And in order to put Zillow a little bit into their space, they would be able to charge less. So, you know, I think, you know, otherwise they wouldn't do it. Otherwise the MLS wouldn't feed it. It's a monetary decision. Well, either way, what, if that's true, I think it's really messed up that my local MLS is giving data to Zillow to display, but not giving it to realtor.com. Yeah, I think that's messed up. But <laughs> if you don't speak up, it's not going to get dissolved. I totally get yeah. you. But I, I guess not, a, not enough people care about it to, you know. Well, this is why, Kath, this Catherine, this is why I'm here. Now, of course, I'm probably never getting hired to speak at a Zillow conference. <laughs> And yeah. I'm, I'm sure you know that something. they invited me like um, in 2017, they flew me to Las Vegas. They paid for my hotel room. They paid for my flight. I uh, actually met with Spencer because they wanted me to become a premier agent. I didn't sign up, but I got a free trip. So <laughs> good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Uh, well, after you hanging out with me, they're probably not going to fly you anywhere anymore. Yeah, that's okay. And I'm sure that I'm sure I'm sure there's some leadership at NAR that's not happy with me either right now. But hey, I'm just I'm just speaking the truth, gang. Do you All think right. we're now on their blacklist? I I, I may be now. <laughs> I'm waiting. My t my team is waiting for a uh, waiting for a phone call from somebody <laughs> to tell me to stop talking. All right, there's any more? Oh, somebody said ring neck court. Eric wants to know how does Zillow navigate their fight their fiduciary duty as a broker with the investing arm of the business? Say that again. How does Zillow navigate the fiduciary duty as a broker with the investing arm of the business? Well, um, yeah, that's a good uh, question too. Um, you see, that's the other thing that's confusing to me is how can you how can you have both both uh, both arguments saying. Well, we're a realtor, and uh, so you know we all can't talk bad about us. But you know we're also a media company or a vendor in our, so you still can't talk bad about us. Doesn't make any sense. So, as far as the fiduciary thing, yeah, that's you know that's a good point, Julie. If let's say I'm going, I'm a broker, and I'm uh, licensed, and I want to buy a homeowner's house. Obviously, I'm not looking out for the homeowner's interest. I'm looking out for my own, but yet I'm also a realtor. So how does that fly? I don't know. That's a, that's a good point. But there's obviously a lot of things happening that people aren't paying attention, nor do they care about. So somebody's making money somewhere. Give me the next question, Julie. How do you feel about the lawsuit against Zillow by Real Estate Exchange? Oh, it's, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So for those of you who don't know, this lawsuit is because when you go to Zillow, I can't, I'm not going to share my screen now, but when you go to Zillow and you search, there's two tabs. There's, um, there's essentially the NAR uh, and Zillow listings, and then there's all the others. So see, that's a boycott 
uh, lawsuit. It's because the real estate exchange, because they're not a NAR member, their listings are getting pushed to another tab on Zillow's site. And so that is, um, that's an antitrust lawsuit and that's accurate. And so, and I do believe that uh, they have a case and, um, and it, which by the way, has brought NAR into the lawsuit now because we're, we're colluding with Zillow to create a monopoly in that that's hurting the real estate exchange. Another bad leadership decision uh, that has put us at risk and now and dragged into a lawsuit. Next question, Julie. Are there lobbyist groups for NAR that are making any difference? Obviously, I don't know, and obviously not. <laughs> not enough difference, right? Not obviously. enough. Edric says, does becoming a premier agent with Zillow lower a realtor's advertising cost and take this task on? Does it? Does, <laughs> <Kathy> <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah. Ask the question again, Julie. I didn't, we didn't understand it. Does becoming a premier agent with Zillow lower a realtor's advertising cost? And no, it raises. No, no. If you become, it has nothing to do with it. It's something completely different your own advertising and Zillow advertising, I would say, no, what's your opinion? Well, if you become a Zillow premier agent, you're giving money to Zillow, hence it would increase your advertising expense. Correct. So instead of giving your money there, take your money and put it into some other vehicle, like for example, Ylopo or Sync, other companies to generate social media online leads. Even advertising with Google would be better than giving it to, to Zillow. Agreed. Next question, Julie. Um, Donna, just as people don't know, you know, there's so much information out there. It, it, like you said, people just kind of asleep at the wheel. They don't, they don't know what's going on. She also said I, she's I, getting involved with her local MLS. So, and listen, the best, the best thing y'all can do, see, first of all, you know, unfortunately, top agents that have like, like Catherine, now Catherine's not putting money with Zillow, but Catherine knows, especially if you go to lab coat, you'll see this question come up. Should I continue to give my money to Zillow? And there's some mega producing agents that are like, yeah, man, I spend 10 grand a month and I make 50 grand a month because I'm spending 10. It's great numbers. But it, it's, it's like we said earlier, you're, you're making a deal with the devil. You're giving it to a company that does not have your best interest in mind. They are clear that they are getting into the same business of listing and selling real estate. And, it, and, and I, I listen, the best analogy is Richard Barton, who created Expedia, created Zillow. What did Expedia do to the travel agency industry? It would be similar if I was a travel agent on Expedia. They're telling me to buy ads on Expedia as a travel agent, so I'll get business from Expedia. And I'm sure uh, for a while that would work until it doesn't. Look what Amazon did to malls. Listen, I'm not, this is not... Um, you got to learn from history, man. And uh, so I, I, I'll, I'll say it one more time this way. I ain't saying to, to, to not work with Zillow and that they're not a good company and they don't have good value and that they bring something to the party. Absolutely. I'm saying two things. Stop funding your, your competitor. Number two is get actively involved in your local MLS. Everybody on this call, you don't have to take on the world. You know, like I'm trying to take this... You don't have to be, you could just see your local MLS, become active, be an advocate, make sure the listing agents are getting their leads. That would, that would make a huge difference on this and stop with the showing time. We have already have a product. NAR has a product. Use that product, Century Keys product. You, that makes sense. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, Kathy, you probably you didn't see this side of me before, right? You thought this was all going to be all fun and laughter, and here we're eating pizza together. I, 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 I know, I know you can do this. I, okay, good. I love it. You have you have many facets, so. Thank you. All right, good. All right, what else have we got, Julia? Another question pop up. Simplified Zillow bad. Invest in yourself is good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Awesome. I think that's it. So to get the to get the slides and 30 days of power agent 
Um, for just $5, you're going to go to that link, which we've put in the chat, which is darylspeaks.com slash trial. Um, I think that's it. As a lot of people have concern. Obviously, you've raised the concern flag for a lot of agents that that might not have known. So, oh, good. This is listen. This is why I, I did this webinar. We've done this is the third time now in the past month that we've done this, because you know um, there's a lot of agents that are just really oblivious. And and listen, if you if you hear it, and you know the, the last time I did this, Catherine, I was not this passionate. Um, and uh, I got good advice from somebody saying, listen, don't be so passionate because I can be that way. Uh, just be factual. Let people see for themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and I kind of broke that rule today where I got maybe more passionate than I should have. And, and Catherine, the reason why is it, it, I cannot tell you how angry I am to see a listing on Zillow, but not on Realtor.com. Yeah, it's not right. I, I absolutely think that's not right. And you know, um, the other thing that I'm seeing a lot is that I have great listings, I spend money on advertising, and then agents meet buyers at my listing that they have never met before, and they meet them the first time at my listing. It's nice to meet you. And they, those people had called them through Zillow. And I'm just thinking, this is my listing, man. Like what? And they know nothing about the area. They know nothing about the house. I, I do the whole tour, the clients and I connect uh, and they have this agent that has been basically thrown at them and have nothing to do with the listing. I, I think it's not right, but. Now, uh, you see, there's a good example. You just said, now, listen, if we're honest, right? Let's, uh, mm -hmm. as an industry, we're talking. So if an agent doesn't have listings, then they would not get the benefit of getting listings from premier agent and paying for those. So that is true yeah. that all of the listings would go to the listing agent. That's true. Those agents would suffer, mm -hmm. but the, now though, the buyer is talking to the agent who listed the property, the buyer will get better customer service. The other listing, a, the other agents may have to get better at getting listings so they can benefit from getting leads from their listings. And, and perhaps there's other ways that they can connect with their community, whether it's smile stops, door knocking, whatever it is to build their business but not having this company that we're paying money to that's using your business to make money off of you and it hurts you and it hurts the seller and it hurts the buyers. This doesn't make sense, yeah. this model. We need to reward the listing agents. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even my clients ask me sometimes, like, you know, because they see on the ring camera, the people that come to the house and they're like, well, who, who, who's, who was this agent? He didn't know anything. He didn't know the people. There. Then I have to explain to them, look, the way Zillow works is I put my, my well, I, my properties on there, but it doesn't mean that people call me automatically. In order for them to call me, I still have to pay an additional fee. And they're like, what? That doesn't make any sense. I said, I know. But sometimes to explain this to the consumer is, difficult because they see it from an outside point uh, but exactly. you have to do that because they don't know that they tell me many times that you're not listed as the main agent on the on the listing and it's uh yeah it's something well you know people catherine people like you and other agents like we said you know let's say you know if which uh which uh, uh board are you which board are you um, I'm the Miami Board of Realtors. Okay, so mm -hmm. Miami Board, um, great staff over there, by the way. Um, yeah. Your education director is Letty. Yeah. Uh, love Letty to death, she's wonderful. Yeah, um, we're the biggest board. Um, so we have a lot of members and we have a great president. So um, I'll bring this up. I actually just saw her recently. So I think that really we need to change something. I just don't know how it works with their, you know, fees and everything. If they then have to cut their fees in order to protect. Yeah, somebody better. somebody may lose some money somewhere along the way, and uh, you know, uh, one of our power agents brought it to their local board, and the board person, whoever it was that they talked to, said, "Oh, we can't boycott Zillow uh, because that's against antitrust," and that's why I added that to this webinar. 
That's not true at all. You know, is Zillow is a vendor. And, uh, and if we decide to stop promoting or giving money to them, that's a, a choice that we do. And if they are a realtor, that's fine as well, but we don't have to, everything that I've said is accurate from a legal standpoint, but basically if you were featured on your listings as part of your local MLS, uh, and if you had a photo of you as one of the photos saying that, hey, Catherine's a listing agent of this property, uh, Zillow would have to pick that up, right? They couldn't edit your listing. They couldn't take your photo out. So that would essentially uh, paralyze Premier Agent. That one step from one board could actually kill the value of Premier Agent. You know what we started doing is putting my avatar on the first picture on Zillow you know, without any name or phone number, just to, you know, have my branding out there. It worked on a few listings, but then they started taking the picture out. I don't know. Yeah, you see that I, 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 there's something wrong there because Zillow can't be editing, you know, your listing. And, um, you know, I don't know, that's where we have to get involved with our board, our local board, and you've got to push your leadership to do the right thing. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, well, this has been great. I absolutely love that. Um, we need to be aware of that, not just focus on selling and buying and whatever, but also look at the legalities and the people that are endangering our business. We have to take responsibility. We are a business and we have to, uh, sometimes we're so worried about our own businesses and our money. And sometimes we, we lose sight of the bigger picture and, right. you know, we've got to all step up and we've got to shout out just like so many other people in so many other aspects. Like I gave example of that in the webinar too, about, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, with the, the bus company and Nike and all these, we have to step up a little bit because this is a challenge mm -hmm. and we need to come together on it. So anyway, Perfect. you are a wonderful host. <laughs> you were wonderful. You talked the whole time. So I didn't have really anything to do here. So you were amazing. You took next it all. time. Next time, I don't want to talk so much. Next time, you and I, we're going to talk together on Lab Coat. I would love that. Okay, I will do that. Just for you, there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for this wonderful webinar. It was very informative. I took a lot of notes, and everybody, um, sign up for the trial on Daryl's page, and it's uh, DarylSpeaks.com/trial. And um, I'll see you. When do we see you next? Uh, I, Tristan has me doing these lab coat things once a month. So it's always okay. Nice we'll see you in a month. Monday. Yep. Okay, first perfect. Monday a month. All right. Sweet. Awesome, Thank everyone. You so much. Have a beautiful day. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. bye, -bye.